Good Tuesday morning. This is 106.1 KYVZ. Joe Bazurik visiting once again with meteorologist Chris Shamick at Decision Weather in Atwood, as well as America's Weather Streaming Channel. Chris, a nice start to a Tuesday. Yeah, Joe, we got temperatures out there this morning that are quite a range. We got 42 out there in Burlington with a southwesterly wind about five miles per hour. Then we get to McCook and we're at 59 degrees with a southwesterly wind at 10 miles per hour. Anywhere in between, we got 49 in Gedlin, 53 in Colby and Oberlin, and the winds are pretty much calm there. That's due to a developing lee side low pressure trough that will be developing today and tomorrow affecting our weather. And what that'll do is those winds will start to turn to the northwest here later this morning and become gusty this afternoon. They're already from the northwest direction in Ogallala, Julesburg, and uh, Sterling and gusting upwards to around 30 miles per hour. So we can expect those speeds of 15 to 30 miles per hour, maybe some gusts up there in the middle to upper 30s. And that what that does is with low relative humidities, we'll have an increased fire weather danger throughout the entire area today, especially south of I-70 that didn't receive all the rain that the other areas saw with the severe weather from Thursday and over the weekend. As far as temperatures go this afternoon, they'll climb up into the middle to upper 70s with those breezy winds, and that'll enhance that fire weather as well, being warm. And then tonight's lows will drop into the lower 40s. There is a low pressure system that'll kick out this afternoon. It'll go across southern South Dakota into northeastern Nebraska, and that'll trail a front through. And even with that front, we won't see a big drop in our temperatures, but there is severe weather potential this afternoon and evening in northeastern Kansas, up the Missouri River from Kansas City to Sioux Falls, and an enhanced area where it could be some tornadic activity from Topeka to Des Moines. Uh, We'll be covering that on myweathernow.com here this afternoon and evening. And then the focus will come tomorrow for severe weather for us out here on the plains. That first low will kick out today. A secondary low will develop over southeast Colorado That'll turn our winds to the southeast tomorrow at 15 to 25 miles per hour. That'll pull Gulf moisture northward into Kansas, and that'll set the stage for that low to kick out tomorrow afternoon and into Thursday morning, taking a track similar to what we saw Thursday and again over the weekend uh, there on Saturday. So we could see the potential for uh, the damaging winds, large hail and the tornadic activity, but particularly more as you get to the east of the area. It's kind of setting up that Highway 25 will be that dividing line once again. North of I-70 will be the precipitation wraparound line. And we have, you know, the the potential there for weather similar to what we have seen in the last couple of events. So we'll be prepared for that for tomorrow. As far as temperatures go tomorrow, uh, we'll be in the middle 70s, kind of priming that atmosphere again. There'll be a dry line. We'll keep our eyes on the potential for maybe a stationary front or something sitting over the area that could be cooler to the north, and that severe weather could shift a little bit further south. Uh, we saw that, you know, with the weekend uh, activity as well. But we'll uh, monitor that and, and be prepared for that for tomorrow. Uh, then as we got behind that, wraparound showers are possible on Thursday. Cooler, windy. We could see gusty northwest winds at 40, 45 miles per hour. Temperatures in the lower 60s, the morning rain ending, and then we'll see as we head into the weekend. On Friday, we'll have another low that will move through Friday afternoon and evening with potentially another round of showers and storms. Temperature around 70. The weekend looks dry as high pressure moves in behind that Friday system. We should be back into the 60s on Saturday, back to around 70 on Sunday. And that's setting the stage for yet another low, similar to the ones we've been seeing Monday and Tuesday with the chance for showers and storms and more severe weather. This looks as though we're kind of in an active weather pattern. How long throughout the month of May do you kind of uh, foresee this this occurring? I really didn't get a look to look at the extended stuff this morning because there were so many uh, of these lows were kind of tracking with the severe weather. But uh, indication was before was we could see this through the first part of May pick up this rain it looks like we could get a half inch or inch of rain with each of these systems so that will set things up nice you know with moisture and that and then with the el nino la nina phase shift uh, we should see by the time we get to the summer and to the falls then warmer and drier conditions setting setting in so we'll take this active start to the spring here going ending april 
heading into May. We'll think moving forward that the next eight to 14 days will be active with wet weather and severe storms. Once again, that's Ag Meteorologist Chris Schrammick at Decision Weather Now, as well as America's Weather Streaming Channel for KYVZ Radio. I'm Joe Vizurek.